Oh, he crushed it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's a big brown. It's a big brown. That is a specimen of a brown trout right there. Good morning. What is up, you guys? Today is absolutely beautiful. It's a cool August morning, and we are going to show you how to catch stream trout today. And I'm going to show you how to catch wild stream trout in particular. Trout that are a little bit more cagey, and they can be a little bit smarter than those pellet-eating hatchery fish. So in a minute, we're going to start fishing the stream right behind me here. I'm going to show you my top four artificial lures for stream trout. But first, let's go use some live bait and catch a nice meal of brook trout and we'll go over the tackle, the tips, and the live bait that you need to get started trout fishing for stream trout. Today, I just got to this, this stream that has brook trout in it. The river has just come up. When you have rain, it washes all kinds of food into the river, makes it muddy, and the fish feed heavily as it's coming up. But once it's high, they've all fed up and the visibility is low, so your best bet is gonna be live bait. Typically, I'm using night crawlers or earthworms of some sort and uh, you can buy night crawlers almost anywhere. For smaller fish like these brookies here in this stream, I'm gonna use a half a crawler, and for fish over 15 inches, I'll typically use a whole crawler. So uh, let's go fishing. So a great place to start on any river is a corner hole like this. So the river comes here, turns and goes that way. And typically what happens is it scoops out the bank, creates a little undercut bank and some deeper water, and those fish will hold in that in that hole got them. yeah that's a decent one right in that corner pretty typical spot for a brookie to hang out so he is uh not hooked too deep i think we're gonna let that guy go now another good spot to fish is called a run which is what i'm fishing right now and often they occur below a corner hole there's one little guy and uh Typically it's a straight stretch, a little bit deeper water, slower water, and oftentimes it has overhanging vegetation on the bank. And uh, it's a great place for trout to kind of wait in ambush, prey coming by and hide under the bushes. So those are my two top spots as far as what to look for when you're looking for trout in these little streams. That feels like a good bite. There we go. There's a little brookie. I'll take that. Pretty fish. He swallowed the hook, so he's gonna go home with me. Got him. There we go. Another decent one. Perfect. Whoa, he's lively. That's a nice, nice chunky brookie right there. Again, with live bait, you're gonna have fish swallowing the hook, so be prepared to keep a few. That's just part of the gig with live bait. So these guys will taste good, fried up. But you can see this guy's been, he's been really packing it on. He's uh, actually got something big in there. We'll have to check that out later. Um, something really big in his stomach. So a lot of times with these high water conditions, the fish have fed up really good. They're not super aggressive because they've been uh, feeding so hard, but live bait will usually trigger them anyway. All right, let's go over the simple gear that we're using for this live bait fishing. Basically, as far as a rig, all I've got is a number six or eight octopus hook, and about 12 inches above that, a small split shot. Like, in this condition, super small split shot. We don't need much weight. It's only a couple feet deep, so, you know, something smaller than a BB is about perfect. And then we're gonna take our night crawler, just thread on the hook about three times like so, and then pinch it off right there. And that's your half crawler. That's all there is to it. So really for live bait fishing, all you need is a assortment of like number six and number eight octopus hooks, some night crawlers, and some split shot. Um, as far as the rod and reel, for these little brookies, I like to use my ultralight setup. So this is actually a Cabela's gold label, five foot six ultralight. And I've got a, a Fish Eagle, Cabela's Fish Eagle tournament on there, just a little 1000 series reel. And that's pulled up with six pound Euro Tackle uh, finesse braid, which I absolutely love. This stuff casts a mile. Like it's almost like you don't have line on there. It's crazy. And then tied to that with a FG knot, I just have a section of four pound mono. So you don't need much tackle for these smaller fish. If you're gonna go up to, you know, bigger browns and stuff like that, I'd go up to like 10 pound or eight pound braid 
and a maybe eight pound mono leader and up to six size six hooks for your uh, crawlers. So a small tackle box is great, you know, to keep some sinkers and hooks in. And one of my best pieces of gear is right here for live bait fishing. And that's a little, some kind of little worm can that you can carry the worms in. This one kind of rolls out like so and keep your crawlers in there. And then it just rolls back. Um, I'll leave a link for all this stuff in the description. You know, it might not be the exact same thing because I don't even know if they make these anymore, but they make a lot of great little worm cans you can use. So um, I'll get into some of this other gear later when we get into artificials, but that's the basics. You can catch trout anywhere with that setup. Oh yeah, there he is. There he is. Let him eat it just a second. Got him. Got him. Another pretty little brookie. Not quite as big as the last two, and I know it's hooked him, so he's gonna go back. Pretty little fish, though. Whoa. Whoa. There we go. He just took off with it. Another eater brookie right there. And he swallowed it too, so we'll keep that one. I think three is all we're gonna keep, so now, just like I was talking about. Right as I was taking the hook out, this guy spits up a slug, see that? And then there's another bug right here. So he's just been feeding like crazy here as the water washes all these bugs in. And uh, like I said, they're just packed full. So trying to get them to chase down a bait is pretty difficult when the water's just come up like this. All right, well that was a lot of fun catching those brookies. Um, I'll tell you how I found this spot. And this is how you guys can find trout streams as well download the Trout Routes app. It's a great way to find new streams. Um, they mark them all as trout streams. Sometimes there's tips, pictures on how to catch fish in those particular streams, and uh, accesses are in there as well. So, so I'll leave a link in the description for that app. And then right here, I'll leave a link to a video I filmed where I actually found this spot using the Trout Routes app. So you can actually see how it works. It's a great exploration tool and I've used it quite a bit. All right guys, that was a blast. Those trout were delicious. I love to go catch a meal of trout once in a while, but today we're gonna be stream trout fishing, catch and release fishing for some big brown trout. And I'm gonna show you how to use four different lures to really uh, take advantage of all the different scenarios that we might run into on the river. So let's get started with spinners. Spinners are a staple of trout fishermen. It's where a lot of us started trout fishing. A plain old MEP spinner has caught probably more trout than all other lures combined. Now, do I fish a spinner all the time? No, I have a lot of other ways to catch trout, but I definitely will utilize it, especially if I wanna cover lots of water. Now I'm starting here with just a number three gold MEPs. Plain gold, no dressing. And as a matter of fact, I actually cut off the red part on this hook to make it even more plain. I prefer my trout spinners basically to just be a blade and a little bit of brass or beads. Very simple and that seems to work the best for me. All right guys, when fishing clear, calm, low water like this, it's always best to approach from downstream and work your way up. Um, that way the fish aren't facing you as you're moving towards them and they don't tend to see you coming as well. And we're just gonna make casts with the spinner cross current and kind of retrieve down through the current towards the fish. You want them to be able to see that spinner coming. You don't want it to sneak up from behind them. Oh, got a fish. Oh man, he just crushed it. As I was saying, <laughs> as you approach the run and start to fish it, you wanna start at the downstream side of the run. Oh, pretty fish. Not a monster, but good start. Oh, got one. Got one. Oh, he just came up and crushed it. Nice little brown. That's spinner fishing. Pretty easy. Just reel it downstream. Wait for those fish to hammer it. Now, that's not a huge fish, but definitely a pretty little fish. Hopefully we'll catch some of his big cousins today. Now the fact that all those smaller fish were down at the tail of the pool tells me there may be a big fish 
up here towards the head of the pool. And sometimes those big fish just come out and crush your spinner. And sometimes they're more finicky and you got to go to something more finessey to catch them. Oh, he crushed it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's a big brown. It's a big brown. Just like I was saying, he did not hesitate at all. Oh man, he crushed that. That was sweet. Oh, it's a big fish. He's just going insane. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Very nice fish. Wow. Just like I was saying, those small fish are down at the tail. Oftentimes that means big boy is sitting up at the head. Crush that number three maps like it was breakfast. Let's see if we can get him in the net here. Whoa. Whoa, buddy. Oh, that's a beautiful fish. Oh, nope. Yep. Got him. Look at that. Oh, man. What a gorgeous trout right there. What a gorgeous trout on the spinner. Holy smokes, let's get this girl unhooked here. All right, guys, I unhooked her in the net here. I like to keep them in the water as much as possible since this is catch and release fishing. Um, you know, the less you handle them out of the water, the better. But I'll lift her out here and give you a look. This is an absolute beautiful specimen of a brown trout right there. Probably a 17, 18 inch fish. Gorgeous. Don't be hesitant to cast way up in that riffle, up in the rocks, and just bring it across that, that riffle because fish will sit up in there feeding, oftentimes at the head of the pool, and it's a good place to hook an extra fish or two. Ooh, just like that. Got one. He was sitting up there. Another nice little brownie. Nothing, nothing even close to the caliber of the one we just caught, but another fish nonetheless. All right, guys, that's spinner fishing in a nutshell. It can't really go much better than that. That's pretty much exactly how you want it to be. Just cast upstream, retrieve, and get hit. So uh, obviously we can catch fish on spinners today. So we're gonna switch it up. Let's try and catch them on a mini stick bait. This is the Euro Tackle Z Spender. This is about a two inch stick bait, which is perfect for trout in my opinion. Um, and it gets down nice and deep pretty quickly, but it also suspends, which is really important. I don't wanna use a floating bait. I wanna use something that suspends in the water when I stop it, because oftentimes they'll hit it on that pause. So let's uh, hit the river again here, see what we can catch. Oh, there was a big brown. Oh, he's right there. Oh, I did not expect that. He followed my lure in. Oh, he's right under my feet. He was right under my feet. Oh, he's a giant. Oh, that's bigger than the one I caught. He's all spooked now, of course. Dang it. Oh, there's one. Got him. He was towards the head of the hole. Nice little brown. There, we caught one on a stick bait. And I was just kind of, uh, I was pretty much um, twitching it, really. I was pause, twitch, pause, twitch, and he hit it. The other two that I missed, they were kind of on a pause twitch also. So that seems to be the program today. Pretty little trout. But that's how you do it on a stick bait right there. All right, guys, so we've covered spinners. We've covered stick baits. Now one of my favorites is, believe it or not, a fly. I'm not going to use fly gear. I'm going to use my spinning rod. This is a little Prince Nymph with a marabou tail. I'm just going to drift this very similar to what I would do for live bait. So I've got a nice run in front of me. It's got some good current. Let's give it a try. I'm going to put a little bit of scent on the bottom of that fly. You don't want to put it on the back where that marabou is going to be kicking because it'll mess up the action, but a little bit on the body of the fly. And I'm just gonna cast this upstream. And where you wanna use this method is where there's plenty of current. So obviously in this run, we've got some decent current and it'll keep that fly moving. Bam, look at that, fish on instantly. Nice fish too, instantly. I'm telling you guys, you do not need 
to have fly gear to fish flies for trout. I drift them all the time. Drift them for steelhead, browns, you name it. And it 100% works. Look at that. Beautiful little fish. On a fly, on a spinning rod. That's so cool. So cool. And that That's a really, really pretty trout. Probably, uh, well, at least a 12, 13, maybe, maybe a 14. Beautiful fish though. So here's, here's my setup. It's very basic. Just that six pound leader, same I've been using for everything. And I got a fly and about 18 inches above that. I've got a split shot just big enough to let that fly kind of tick the bottom. I don't want it sitting on the bottom or snagging on the bottom. I just want it just barely ticking the bottom as it drifts down through. There's one. There's one. Oh, pretty. That might be a brookie. That might be a brookie. Hey, there we go. Pretty fish. Wow. Look at that. On the fly. That's about a maybe 8 inch brook trout. Just a gorgeous fish. Very cool. Let that girl go. There's obviously a lot of fish in this run. I'm basically getting bit on every drift with this fly right now. You know, you're not always going to catch the biggest fish. And it's not the fastest way to fish, but if you know there's fish in a run, it will definitely catch them. All right, guys, so one of the nice things about the way I'm fishing here with these four different lures is I only need one rod and reel to do this job. This is a six foot six St. Croix medium light triumph rod. I don't like them much longer than that because of maneuverability and it's a nice uh, action for fishing all these different baits including the flies, spinners. Uh, on that I've got a Daiwa Revros which is a 1500 series reel, great drags on these and I've got that spooled up with 10 pound suffix 832 braid and I like the yellow for visibility so I can see those strikes especially when I'm fishing those flies. And then on the end of that braid I've got a six foot leader of six pound test cigar fluorocarbon and that is all you need. That's my setup and it works great. Um, just bring one rod with you and you're good to go. All right guys I'm going to start making my way back to the truck here and I'm going to throw a spinner all the way back hitting little pockets of water but before we do that we have to cover the fourth bait and that is the paddle tail swim bait. And this morning on my way up here I decided to try a little spot before I uh, headed here and I was throwing that exact bait and here's exactly what happened. Alright so they weren't hitting the gold so I'm going to put this black on just a totally different look and um, I'm going to swim it a little slower closer to bottom and see if that makes a difference. Sometimes it's just changing it up a little bit that can make all the difference. There's one. Nice fish, nice fish. Oh, he crushed it. He crushed it. Oh, this feels like a dandy. Switched from gold to black because I knew there was fish in here and I just couldn't get him to hit that gold. Oh, this is a dandy. Really nice fish. Ho, oh, ho, ho, ho. Sun isn't even above the trees yet, and we're hooked up to a big old brownie. Oh, I love these fish. This is a nice one on the B vibe. One of the best trout lures that I've used in years. It just plain catches fish. Look at that beaver. Don't bite me off, beaver. Oh, you guys, this is a big brown. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's just just gorgeous, too. Come here, buddy. Oh, <laughs> what a sick trout. Oh, <laughs> oh he's, got a, he's got a river lamprey on him. See that? Those actually aren't terrible for the fish. They don't kill them like the sea lampreys, but... Um, definitely a pain in the butt for the fish so we're, we're gonna take him off and make sure he doesn't 
bother him anymore but holy smokes what a beautiful way to start the day i mean that is a gorgeous gorgeous stream trout right there all right guys i'm just going to take this guy out of the net for a second to show you but that is a specimen of a brown trout right there uh, we got his lamprey off for him now we're going to let this fish go but that is an incredible start to the day on the bee vibe fishing artificials <laughs> hopefully we can get a couple more like that today so as you can see that was a giant brown really nice inland brown and i caught it on a paddle tail swim bait which is i've caught a lot of nice trout on that bait in the past few years so super super effective there he goes i wanted to go over some essentials that you should have with you anytime you go trout fishing first of all the sling pack is my favorite way to carry my gear so i got several tackle boxes in here um, one with my plastics and one with my hardware and then uh, one tackle box with just sinkers and weights for live bait fishing i keep extra line for tying up leaders in here uh, fly box I keep in here if I do go fly fishing and uh, that just slings around your back like so you can sling it to your back so you can carry it hands free it's not in your way and then when you need stuff you swing it around to the front you have full access to all the pockets and uh, to that I have attached my trout net which you know even if you're not fishing for big fish you might hook a big fish even in a small stream and you'll be glad you had your net um, just a, a small but with a deep pocket something that can handle like an 18 to 20 inch fish is perfect keep that with you all the time and if you're gonna keep fish a creel is a very useful tool and basically that's just another sling that goes over your arm like that now what it does is actually keeps your fish cool by evaporation so you can dunk this in the water and as the water evaporates from the canvas it'll keep those fish cool now, I always kill my trout when I put them in the creel, so I just pop that lower gill off and that bleeds them out, kills them right away. Uh, they don't suffer and you get a nice bled out fish. So that is a great tool to have if you plan on keeping any. And then like I mentioned before, my little bait box is attached to that. And then besides my rod, that's pretty much all I need. Now, when it comes to bugs, a bug net can be absolutely invaluable. And down on that stream where I just was fishing, I had this on even though you didn't see it because I had uh, my camera facing forward. The mosquitoes were horrendous, and they often are, especially on a muggy day like this uh, in the woods. You're going to have mosquitoes. So deep woods off, high deet, head net, and you should be all right. Uh, Thermosel works well too if it's not windy. So make sure you bring something for the bugs. And that's pretty much all you need. I was so excited to go fishing, I almost forgot to mention waders. These are three millimeter neoprene waders. They're made by Tidewee. And um, they've been really good for me. I can use them in cold weather and they keep me warm. And as well as they're not too hot for the summertime. So a good set of waders is really nice to have. You don't have to have them, but they certainly make the experience more enjoyable. Now let's just fish this out, see if we can't pull a couple more trout and call it a day. Oh, there's one. There's one. Nice little brown. Little guy. Pretty fish though. Man. 